Thanks for joining us. I'm Xavier Loop. I'm a solutions architect at AWS. I will be co-presenting this session with Mitra and Ravi Zadeh, Global Head Architecture and Cloud at Standard Chartered Bank. In this session, we will present the migration of Standard Chartered's core banking system to AWS. Here's the agenda of the session. Mitra will first present Standard Chartered Bank and its cloud strategy. She will then describe Atlas, its core banking system. And you will learn about Atlas program requirements, migration, delivery, and outcomes. For the second half of the session, I will present a deeper dive on Atlas technical solution. I will now let Mitra start this presentation. Thanks for joining us. I have the pleasure of co-presenting with Xavier, our AWS partner, on the cloud journey of our core banking platform at a Standard Chartered Bank. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I'll share with you a bit of a background on our bank, Standard Chartered, our cloud strategy, and cloud migration journey of our core banking platform. And of course, a quick overview of the outcome achieved and key lessons learned. Let's start with some background on Standard Chartered. SCB is a global bank that operates in 59 countries across retail, corporate, and institutional banking, and also wealth management. SCB have been operating for over 150 years. On our cloud journey, cloud is a cornerstone of our strategy to meet the present and future banking needs of our customers. Adopting a cloud-first approach makes our vision for next generation of financial services like virtual banking, next generation of payments, open banking, and banking as a service a reality. As the disruption in the financial industry continues, we can focus on client benefits by deploying our solution quicker and also faster through the integration of new business models and partners. Our plan is to move most of our application and data which currently residing in our on-prem physical data center to cloud, of course, subject to regulatory approvals. Over the next five years, we expect more than half of our compute workload workloads for significant applications, including our core banking trading system and new digital ventures such as virtual banking, banking as a service, to be cloud-based. We have adopted a multi-cloud strategy, which gives us maximum resiliency, flexibility, and security across our global footprint. Of course, supported and enabled by our strategic partners in this space, including AWS. We have developed and continuing to develop a number of cloud-based next-generation financial service offering, such as MUX, our digital banking home form, and Nexus, our banking as a service. In these cases, the cloud has enabled us to deliver innovative product offerings to our customers. However, a more challenging problem for us was how to migrate our existing, including legacy on-prem application to the cloud, as to leverage the benefits that cloud offers. A key aspect of our approach was that rather than starting with migrating all the low-hanging fruits, which of course we restarted, we set ourselves a more challenging objective by selecting our core banking platform, Atlas, as an early cloud migration tar target. I will share with you today how we went about this and key lessons learned. 
Atlas is a standard charted core backing platform supporting multiple business segments. It accommodates retail and wholesale customers at the same time and covers the common denominator of all client groups. It's an in-house developed banking system. It holds the customer's transaction and static data as well as product information. As such, is the system of record for all products, regulatory reports, and customer information. Being a key transaction processing engine requiring a high level throughput, of course, and 24 by 7 availability. It supports our critical banking operations and provides the foundation for important upstream processes. It's a complex ecosystem, as you can see, with over 100 integration points with downstream and upstream applications. Given all this, Atlas does not appear to be a good case for early cloud adoption. So, why did we start with a very complex application so early in our cloud adoption journey? Good question. Part of motivation, of course, was that if we can move core banking to cloud, we can do anything. The lessons that we learned through addressing the challenges of complex, highly integrated platform will set us upright as an organization to address the migration of other applications destined for cloud. In short, it will help us develop cloud muscle. Of course, this was not the sole factor in our decision. It was also supported by other considerations, such as expected cost, cost benefit, improved resiliency and agility, which I will address some of these in just a few moments. Before we cover these benefits, a bit of history on core banking transformation. It commenced in early 2000, where we took a number of heterogeneous banking systems and developed a solution that consolidated all of our products' variation and capabilities into a single platform. The aim was to move to a single code base to serve retail and institutional needs that is deployed in multiple markets. As a result of this initiative, we built a strong, capable core banking team. This provided us with the necessary collective skills and experience to successfully execute complex core banking migration to cloud. Before we embarked on the journey of migrating Atlas to cloud, we did undertake a buy versus build assessment. A number of buy options were considered. Whilst there was a good fit from an adherence to market standards standpoint, but eventually we discounted, discounted, discounted all those options, of course, due to significantly higher cost of integration to the existing ecosystem and also required customization to support the equivalent functionality available within the existing core banking platform. I can say with pride that Atlas is continuously evolving to compete with top class market solutions. Harmonization and modernization have been an art at the heart of Atlas delivery. Having a single code base that is deployed in all markets provides a cons consistent experience for global customers whilst providing flexibility for local customization through configuration. Atlas, prior to, prior to cloud migration, had already delivered substantial benefits such as significant uplift and modernization of technical steps, which enabled the smoother in integration with digital channels, uplifting our customer experience. The scalability and tr throughput had been significantly improved, as well as av availability, which of course is a key requirement for the core banking system. 
This improvement has enabled us to roll out product across markets in shorter time frame with significant cost efficiency. Focusing back on cloud migration, AWS solution had to meet several requirements to enable a su successful migration, naming a few performance, availability, monitoring, security, resiliency, and of course, reg regulatory requirements. We started with this position that with our cloud migration, at last to AWS, we need to set the expectation that the key non-functional outcomes we maintain are all improved upon. AWS very carefully was evaluated against the requirements. And Xavier, of course, will cover in detail shortly how these were addressed in the AWS. I just wanted to call out that the regulatory complex compliance challenges we had to overcome. We had to engage, we have to engage 50 different regulatory bodies, each with a varying level of acceptance for deploying material workloads into cloud. This is an ongoing, this is an ongoing and important engagement for us. Let's zoom in in some key aspects of modernization. We undertook a two-step approach to help us accelerate our cloud migration journey. Our existing stack required some modernization before it was ready for cloud deployment. It is important to remember that while we had aspiration for cloud, we needed to continue to support our on-prem deployments in those markets that the regulatory bodies had not allowed cloud deployments. Continuing with a single code base that could support both deployment model was a key principle that allowed us or still aligned us optimizing the required skills reducing both ch change and run cost, whilst ensuring that we can deliver new functionality faster, of course. Let's touch on a few modernization aspects. We introduced an event-driven architecture for Atlas, which helped us to decouple the various components of the platform and gave us greater flexibility with de deployment options. Adoption of APIs was another dimension which enabled a richer set of services to be available for our various digital channel innovations. In addition, the Atlas team underwent a transformation in how they built and deployed their solution through adoption of DevOps practices, including the transition to a more automated build and deployment capability. This enabled more frequent iteration and a shortened delivery cycle. The key takeaway here is that the adoption of a two-step approach towards the migration by spending the effort upfront to optimize technical stack position us, positioned us well in preparing the application for cloud deployment. How did our execution approach allow us to be successful in our cloud migration journey? A good question. We took an execution approach involving a progressive delivery model that allowed us to undertake the modernization of the application whilst also continuing to provide ongoing feature enhancements. The coexistence of new technology components with the old enabled us to support the gradual and staged rollouts in support of the multiple implementation in the various markets. We also standardized various aspects of the solution to remove some customization that had been introduced to cater for market specific features. Additionally, we leveraged some toolings to assist in some aspects of the modernization efforts. 
These approaches allowed us to modernize the data stack and prepare for the cloud migration while still continuing to enhance the core banking platform and deploy upgrades to the various markets. Here you can see a quick snapshot of our a snapshot of our roadmap since 2019. In 2019, we undertook the modernization task. On completion in 2020, we rolled out Atlas in 14 markets. 12 of these, of course, we are on-prem deployments and our first live deployment that supported two markets. By the end of 21, an additional seven markets will be provided by cloud deployments of Atlas. In 2022 and 2023, we will continue to deploy both cloud and on-prem instances to support 40 markets. What have we learned so far? There have been many lessons learned as we progress on this journey, for sure. I will only share with you the top three. First one, how did we design for speed and performance? We considered the impact of network latencies, of course, when choosing AWS regions, catering for proximity to our customers as well as proximity to on-prem data centers where other interface systems are hosted. The second one, ensuring high resiliency and availability. We leveraged and are leveraging AWS capability to design for resiliency, deploying our application across multiple availability zones, guarantees no disruption to our operation, even in the event, event of one availability zone failure. And of course, the last one, we leverage AWS expertise and reduce to build time to build a first class application and also use the tools provided by AWS. This allowed us to accelerate our delivery and avoid preventable pitfalls. Our cloud migration efforts will continue and learning from Atlas experience will allow us to continue to thrive in our cloud journey. With that, I will now hand over to Xavier to discuss the technical aspects of the Atlas solution. Thank you. Let's talk about performance. The key requirement was to be able to sustain up to 4,000 transactions per second, 10 times more than the previous on-premises system. The other requirement was to be able to scale depending on the load. So what did we add in the architecture to achieve this? The first priority was to add horizontal scalability using AWS auto scaling groups. The auto-scaling groups makes it possible to adjust the number of instances depending on the load. This was simple to implement because Atlas had been modified to become fully stateless. Application load balancers were deployed in front of the two auto-scaling groups. They distribute the network traffic to the different instances. A side cache pattern was implemented for reference data using in-memory cache directly integrated inside the application. This reduces latency for reference data query and also reduces the load on the Aurora PostgreSQL database. The last component used to improve performance is PostgreSQL read replicas. With these changes, Atlas was able to deliver the required scalability and performance. We will now dive a little deeper on the implementation of these read replicas. Aurora read replicas reduce the load on the primary database instance by offloading read-only queries. 
Aurora supports up to 15 readers and they share the same underlying storage as the primary instance. This helps lower cost and reduce the replica lag time. For the Atlas workload, SCB is now using two read replicas. Depending on the use case, the requests are sent to either the primary node or to the two read replicas. OLTP requests are read and write transactions. They are directed to the primary node. OLAP workload, operational reporting and query data download are read-only. So they can be directed to the read replicas. This classification of the queries was done early in the project when the SQL code was adapted to PostgreSQL. The usage of read replica help Atlas increase the performance of its database. It also removed the risk of OLTP transactions failing due to large concurrent OLAP requests. Let's talk about reliability. As presented earlier by Mitra, Atlas requires a minimum availability of 99.99%. .99%. This means less than one hour of downtime per year. Another key requirement is to ensure RPO of zero, which means no lost data if an instance or an availability zone becomes unavailable. How does Atlas Architecture deliver these requirements? Mostly by leveraging AWS free availability zones. To achieve a RPO of zero, all data is copied synchronously on multiple AZs. This replication is directly managed by Aurora, S3, and EFS. No data is lost if an instance or an AZ becomes unavailable. To minimize the RTO, all Atlas services are deployed across the three AZs. Front-end and application instances are deployed multiple times in each AZ. Aurora, EFS, and S3 are also available across the three AZs. The auto-scaling groups balance the target capacity between the available AZs. Enough instances are provisioned in each availability zone to continue handling the load if one AZ is removed. The application load balances ensure that the requests are sent only to healthy instances. And for Aurora, if a primary database becomes unavailable, there is an automatic failover to one of the read replica. This failover typically completes within 30 seconds. On top of this, Atlas has implemented an advanced log replay mechanism. A copy of all transactions is sent to EFS in a binary format. They are kept for 24 hours. If a database becomes corrupted, it is possible to restore an earlier version using the point-in-time recovery feature of Aurora. The Atlas team can then replay the transaction logs. All transactions are idempotent which means that they can be replayed multiple times safely. One last thing. Direct connect link to on-premises is also redundant. SCB uses two different network providers to avoid having a single point of failure. With all these changes, Atlas delivers more than the reliability requirements the RPO is zero and the RTO is minutes. We will now dive a little deeper on how Aurora storage helps increase Atlas reliability. Aurora has a log structured distributed storage. Conceptually, the storage engine is a distributed SAN that spans multiple AZs. Aurora builds its storage volume in 10 gigabyte logical blocks called protection groups. The data in each protection group is replicated on six storage nodes across three AZs. 
a write is considered successful if at least four of the six storage nodes acknowledge receipt. This architecture makes Amazon Aurora storage fault tolerant. Aurora transparently handles the loss of up to two copies of data without affecting database write availability. And it can lose up to three copies without affecting read availability. On top of that, Aurora Storage has implemented self-healing mechanisms. Data blocks and disks are continuously scanned for errors and replaced automatically. Reliability is one of the key reasons Aurora was chosen by SCB for its core banking system. As we have seen, Atlas architecture makes it possible to have a disaster recovery between different availability zones of a single region. SCB also wanted to have disaster recovery between regions. In case of a catastrophic event impacting a full region, this would make it possible to restart Atlas in a distant AWS region. For example, a deployment in Dublin could be restarted in Frankfurt. For cross-region disaster recovery, the requirements are different. The maximum APO is 15 minutes. The maximum RTO is 24 hours. SCB decided to implement a pilot light strategy. In this mode, the data are live in the secondary region, but the rest of the services is down. When a disaster occurs, the remaining part of the infrastructure is deployed. This makes it possible to reduce the APO while optimizing the cost. So what can we do to optimize the APO? Is it possible to have synchronous replications between regions to achieve an APO of zero? Of course not. The latency between regions is too high due to the distance. The speed of light is the limit. Can we implement a simple snapshot restore mechanism? Yes, this is possible given the requirements. However, we can reduce significantly the RPO using AWS native replication services. Atlas chose to use the following components to implement asynchronous replication. For Amazon Aurora, they use Aurora Global. For Amazon EFS, they use AWS DataSync. And for Amazon S3, they use S3 cross-region replication. With these native replication services, at last we'll be able to have a cross-region RPO of minutes for S3 and EFS and of seconds for Aurora. This cross-region disaster recovery architecture is currently being tested by Atlas and will be deployed in production soon. We will now do a deeper dive on cross-region replication with Aurora Global. I will show you how this managed service is working under the hood. So these are the different steps of the replication flow. First, the primary instance send log records in parallel to storage nodes, replica instances, and replication server. Secondly, the replication server streams log records to replication agent in the secondary region. Third, the replication agent sends log records in parallel to storage nodes and replica instances. In case of an outage, the replication server can also pull log records from storage nodes in order to catch up. So what are the benefits of these architectures for Atlas? First, it provides a high throughput, up to 
150,000 writes per second. Secondly, it, it ensures a low replica lag, less than one second lag for cross region. Finally, it enables a fast recovery, less than one minute of downtime after region and availability. Aurora Global is a key enabler for the cross-region disaster recovery strategy of Atlas. As Atlas stores very sensitive transaction data, security is of course highly critical. The application needs to be compliant with the regulations from the different countries they operate in. It also needs to be aligned with the internal SCB standards. To ensure security and compliance, SCB leverages more than 18 AWS services. I will highlight some of them. For security, Atlas uses AWS KMS to encrypt all data. They use a bring your own key configuration to keep full control over the encryption master keys. For auditability, SCB uses AWS CloudTrail to log all account activities. The activation of AWS CloudTrail is managed by the group landing zone. For compliance, SCB leverages AWS Config to ensure that the resources deployed are compliant with the rules defined at group level. A non-compliant resource would generate an alert and can even be automatically blocked. Of course, SCB also uses other security components on top of the ones provided by AWS. For example, they use Splunk, an AWS partner, to detect some security threats. All these services help SCB ensure compliant, compliance with internal policies and regulatory standards. As already mentioned by Mitra, Atlas has to be compliant with the regulation from the different countries they operate in. In particular, multiple countries mandate that the financial data are stored in the countries of the customer. With 25 launch regions and 8 more announced, the AWS Cloud is a key enabler to ensure compliance with data allocation regulations. As of now, Atlas is already deployed in two different AWS regions. The goal is to expand to a minimum of six AWS regions for the next deployments. I would like to mention that one of the impact of this global deployment was an increased latency for calls to on-premises dependencies. The Atlas team worked to optimize and parallelize these requests this reduced the impact of latency for regions far away from SCB's on-premises data centers. For SCB, being able to monitor and audit its database activity is a strong requirement for all critical workloads. When SCB started using AWS, Amazon RDS was not offering security monitoring feature. So they were not able to use RDS for critical workloads. This need was taken into account by the AWS service teams. In 2020, database activity stream, DAS, became available on Amazon Aurora. And SCB was able to validate Aurora for Atlas. What is exactly DAS? DAS is a feature of Aurora that provides a near real-time stream of the activity in the database cluster. You can see here an example of a select event in DAS. The JSON document is very detailed. User, session, IP address, SQL request, number of rows returned. Return. All this information can be used for auditability and security monitoring. SCB is then using Splunk to analyze these DAS events 
and detect potential threats. I will now describe how database activity stream is configured at SCB. First, DAS is enabled on Aurora for all critical workloads. This is activated by a DAS administrator who is not the DBA. With DAS, there is a strict separation of duty. DBAs don't have access to the collection, transmission, storage, and processing of the streams. Once DAS is enabled, it sends all activity events to Amazon Kinesis data streams. This is done with minimal CPU overhead. SCB then uses Kinesis data analytics to filter the activity stream. Only the relevant security events are kept. Finally, Kinesis data firehose sends events to Splunk in near real time. Splunk analyzes this data to detect the security threats. This solution makes it possible to detect security threats at the database level. As I mentioned earlier, this was a strong requirement for SCB. And we know DAS is an important enabler for many other financial institutions. I would like to insist now on data migration. What are the requirements for Atlas migration? First, it's a heterogeneous migration from DB2 LUW to PostgreSQL. Secondly, the amount of data to migrate can be up to 2.5 terabytes for some countries. Finally, migration duration is key as the move has to be done in the time slot approved by the regulator. I will now describe the different steps of the migration. At the beginning of the project, the team worked first on the schema conversion. Using AWS schema conversion tool, they were able to convert the DB2 schema to a PostgreSQL schema in less than one week. After that, they worked on the modification of the application code. Atlas uses custom SQL queries. So they had to change these queries to take into account the new environment, PostgreSQL, GBoss, and Sidecache. AWS SCT helped scan Atlas source code for embedded SQL statements and convert them. This task was definitely more complex. It took a few months to modify the request and tune the performance. The next tasks are repeated for each country deployment. One week in advance, history data is migrated using AWS Database Migration Service, DMS. This data can be up to 1.5 terabytes, depending on the country. That's approximately 60% of the total. And it takes up to six hours to migrate. A raw level validation is done after using DMS to avoid any error. On cutover date, the remaining data is migrated using AWS DMS. This time, the amount of data can be up to one terabyte and the migration can take up to three hours. Once again, a raw level validation is done after using DMS to avoid any error. AWS DMS was a key enabler for the migration from DB2 to PostgreSQL. One of the critical success factors for Atlas was to be able to accelerate the creation of new environments. The Atlas project decided to adopt a DevOps approach. This impacted the processes, the tools, and the culture. The first change was to introduce infrastructure as code. 
Atlas now uses Terraform to deploy all its AWS infrastructure. The second change was to automate 100% of the deployment using a CI-CD pipeline. One of the important benefits of this automation is improved security. Nobody has a direct access to production environments and all changes are stored in the code repository and can be audited. The third change was to adopt a blue-green deployment model. With this strategy, environments become immutable. New versions of Atlas are deployed in a new environment, and when this new environment is up and validated, traffic is shifted to it. The first benefit is the reduced downtime for Atlas, and the other advantage is the possibility to immediately roll back to the previous version if anything goes wrong. The last change was a modification of the roles and responsibilities. With DevOps, the team moved to a self-service approach. The project had to redefine its organization and its processes. I would like to insist on a specific metric, which in my opinion, shows the progress achieved. Thanks to the changes described, the creation of a new Atlas environment was reduced from four weeks to a single day. As a quick recap, today's session covered why SCB decided to transform Atlas, the key business drivers behind it, the bank's modernization strategy, the reason why SCB decided to move to the cloud, and how the program is being delivered. AWS is a key partner for this transformation. For example, we help SCB achieve industry-leading high availability and disaster recovery with deployment in three availability zones in two regions. Data regulation compliance across dozens of countries. Agility from being able to create new environments in a single day rather than four weeks. Finally, performance by being able to handle 10 times as many transactions per second. Our partnership with Standard Chartered has delivered real business results, and we look forward to working with the bank on the next challenge. We would like to thank you for listening to this session.